as a kid, I grew up with internet radio in more of a streaming thing. You'd go to a website and you could hear some European deep trance or happy hardcore. And I think you could even run it off the Winamp player and it really whips the llama's ass. Regardless, the world of internet radios has moved on and today they still exist. And these are Wi-Fi enabled devices that allow you to connect to oftentimes international radio stations to be able to listen to their programming, their music, etc. And while for me, that is kind of the antithesis of what I do, I like to have a radio and potentially listen to those international stations from my home via RF. I do find it interesting, though, when hybrid radios come onto the market that are both internet enabled in the sense that they have some kind of Wi-Fi capability or something like that, but then also discrete radio components because... Now you got a whole world of things going on. What's the RFI? Are they competing with each other? Is, is it a little bit better of a RF traditional radio? Is it a better internet radio? And usually they tend a little bit better for the internet radio side of the house. Today I have an interesting radio to take a look at. This is the Choyong LC90 multiband internet radio. Yes, this is a shortwave radio, AM, FM, and internet capable radio. The cool thing about that is uh, it will actually download firmware upgrades over your Wi-Fi if you connect it to it. And to keep it updated, it's actually uh, already unlocked some shortwave features by doing that. It's been out for a little while. There's a number of video reviews on this radio that you can go watch if you want to add to your thoughts to it or hear some other people's thoughts as well. But this will cover 64 to 108 megahertz for FM. Medium wave is 512 to 1710 kilohertz. And for shortwave, it will do 2.3 up to 26 megahertz. So you're not picking up 10 meters necessarily, uh, and you're not really going much below 80. But it's interesting enough that I think I'm going to take a look at this, and let's put it through its paces, and I'll tell you what I think. Here is the LC90 in all its glory. I'm going to go ahead and power this on, and we are going to pull off the plastic. Pull off the plastic. Pull off the plastic. Pull off, Jesus. Man. All right. So this is the radio. It's it's all front panel controlled, front firing speaker. There is a TF card and a SIM card for internet, I take it. Nothing on the left side, nothing on the top except for your, your aerial. And then you have a USB-C, you have an external antenna, and a headphone jack, along with the dials, which handle tuning, fine tuning, and volume. Power button gets this whole thing going. Let's get that started. And you can change between the primary operations just from FM, medium wave, short wave. Obviously, medium wave in this case is AM. There is internet features to this, and I gotta remind everybody that this uses Wi-Fi if you want it to. You don't have to. It still is fully functioning in the radio sense. I think the best way to decipher this before we get to the internet stuff is show you what you know, right? You guys know the primary radio thing. So you can click power, you can click the FM button, and that'll bring you into your traditional radio. I'm not using the aerial right now either. No aerial. In the violin concerto number two in D minor by Henrik Wieniawski. That's a recording from back in 1973. All right, so on AM, if you hold down the medium wave button, it'll put it into a scan mode, which is kind of helpful. But I want to show you, you do have settings for bandwidth as well as like a gain setting, which they call indoor or outdoor. Let's take a listen as we play around with the gain and bandwidth. Maximum of six kilohertz width. Moscow to Boise ahead of his trial. Now with the antenna on the side, it makes shortwave listening a little difficult because I need to take basically this plug and go into the side, but it doesn't give me a lot of space. So I'm going to use this headphone jack splitter, which I hope covers it. We'll see here shortly. We may have to switch it. And I think that worked because our SNR went up significantly. Anyway, let's go down to shortwave. Now, it should know this is a pause scan. So it's it's scanning through the signals, and you can kind of see signal strength there in the 
top side, it's not going to play the radio while it's scanning. And it scans relatively fast. I'd say that's about average. It's not anything crazy fast, but it's got a lot of frequencies to go through for the entire shortwave band spaces. Now, there's kind of something that's interesting with this radio. I think it's something that they probably need to work on in firmware, but the shortwave stations, the loud ones, come in really well. But the problem is that they are stepping all over each other. There doesn't seem to be good isolation with the frequencies. So this is the time standard frequency, WWV, and you should be hearing do do do, and you do, but it's also stepped on by voice. It actually seems like there's multiple stations on top of each other. I'm going to restart this and see if it changes anything. Well, that seemed to help, but now we still have, now we got louder signals on top of each other. So if you're looking for a radio to do shortwave, this probably isn't it. Medium wave sounds good. FM sounds really good. Now, going down the list, you can do Bluetooth as well if you wanted to tether to something that's Bluetooth. We haven't connected anything yet. And, of course, you can read anything off the TF slot. Let's go to Menu. And in Menu, this is where you can actually go through and search for different stations. Oh, single sideband, plus and minus. Why don't we try that? Let's go. So that was about the best result I've been able to get on sideband uh, with this. And the shortwave stations were, were kind of all over each other. If anything, I think the sideband maybe has better isolation than AM in this radio. I, I don't know what's going on there, but uh, anyway. If we go back to menu, slide through the different locales. So let's go to North America. And then from here, you can go into the, these different radio stations. And that's kind of, I think, what the primary point of this radio is. I, I appreciate the FM and AM. Shortwave's a little rough, but let's go ahead and get into this. Sure, California. What's going on in California? Radio Paradise, Soma FM, Soma FM Secret Agent. Let's do that. Oh. I have a feeling I'll get content striked on most of these, but it does work pretty well. And if you go back, so let, let's just say you hit music, the music icon. It'll give you a list of, yeah, Russian dance. Why not? Let's just go ahead and go into that. Now, some countries may not be our friends and may not want us hearing them on the radio, the internet radio. But there you go. It's, it's working. Sure. And you can go down through. <laughs> yeah, see, you can get all these crazy uh, different radio stations. Radio Caroline, I think, is one I've actually heard of. So let's go to that one. It's Hindi Hits. I didn't know that was Hindi, but all right. Let's go to podcasts. Let's see what kind of podcasts it has. Can I search for a podcast? No. Let's see. What if we hold this down? No. How about we go to menu and we do search. Ham Radio Crash Course. Yep. Nope. <laughs> Ooh, hey. Yep, 
you get the idea, I hope. Uh, there is a list, a whole big wide list of these internet stations. And if you go to news, you can get into just more outside of music as well. So RFI, Afrique. I don't know, man. What's this one about? Qu'est-ce qui les empêche de s'assumer pleinement vos personnages, d'être heureux dans leur vie Je dirais pour Henri, c'est un peu particulier parce que à partir du moment où il a essayé de s'assumer, les choses ont pris un coup. Interesting. Now, a feature with this is you can just use the dial once you're listening to a station to scan to the next one, and it'll pull the live stream off the internet, and you can get right into. Oh no, maybe not. The menu is just going to be for the internet stuff, right? So let's uh, let's get out of that. We'll go back to FM. And let's go to the menu, the actual settings menu. So Wi-Fi, backlight, all the things you'd expect. FM step, medium wave step, interesting. Too bad there's not a short wave step. Uh, okay, that's it. Let's see what a version info is. Oh, interesting. Well, let's do that shall we it asked me to insert a tf card which i did down here and then it prompted to reset and so now we are resetting i thought we had the most up to date oh let's see let's see if it did something network error oh there we go okay to upgrade yep about five minutes for upgrade kids we didn't even we're not even testing the latest and greatest. We may have to redo that whole shortwave section. Oh my goodness. Okay, verifying success. Now it's gotta reflash the whole thing, right? Because it did the download onto the CF card or the TF card. Thank you. Oh, don't press any key. All right, we got the check mark of success here. What did that do for us? Did that change the whole game? Solid actor and he doesn't get enough credit for just his acting, and Tulsa King brings that out. Now, did either of you uh, see the two-part HBO documentary about David Chase and The Sopranos? I think that <laughs> I think that is KFI that's bleeding through, which is a local 640 station. But the funny part about that is I have an AM a filter. I think it's still making it through, though. Yeah, it's still stations on top. Let's try single sideband again. I mean, I don't know what I'm doing. Why not just test it the old-fashioned way? FT8 noises. Yeah, okay. That seems to work out all right. <laughs> ZZL1. Hey, it's picking up a uh, Australian station. Oh no, ZL is uh New Zealand. That's kind of problematic. It, it doesn't seem like it's got a good handle on on the signals here. I don't know what I'm actually listening to, if it's local interference, if it's actually HF. I don't know if that's noise. I don't know what's happening with it. But given that you're probably watching my videos for me to talk about radios that will do shortwave among FM and medium wave, this one's not really it, right? It's, it, it's, not, it's not got the juice for what you want for doing shortwave. I think the internet portion of this is a, a novel, interesting thing that may be interesting to a small segment of you. And the FM does sound really good. The medium wave could be a little bit better. That could be just based off of where I am physically. But the stations that are the loudest, like um, like 640, they, they come in without much problem. Yeah, they sound great. Or visit theloanexchange.com. Everyone's on the hero's journey. I'm John McClane. A little bit of a buzz, um, but the bandwidth 
flood your home with rancid waste. Don't worry, Rooter Hero is here to save the it's day. For a bit of noisy. Rooter Hero will cable your drain, protecting your home and family. Call us anytime. That's fantastic, though. You can't beat that. That sounds really good. I'm actually... <laughs> might just keep this around just for that. Now, for me, tra traditional radio broadcasting is not something I do a whole lot of. When I'm in a car, sure, maybe occasionally I'll listen to an FM station or an AM station. But I generally am just going to stream my music, listen to a podcast, audiobook, or let YouTube audio play in the background. I did try the radio for a little while just in my home, turned on an internet station that I found. I think I found one for the 80s and some deep house or something like that, international station. And it was... It was cool. It was actually something that was a little nice to just have it running in the background. I'm not saying that I'm doing that all the time. Not at all. But it was kind of fun to have a traditional radio station where you could be a little bit more selective and maybe get a little deeper into the into the weeds with some of the music that you like to listen to. I generally do like EDM along with like jazz and blues and some other stuff as well. So interesting from the point of our capability as a species to be able to do this kind of stuff and for you you may find the internet radio aspect of it pretty interesting now from an am fm standpoint again broadcast sounds good i generally will listen to kusc as a radio test it's classical music and usually you want pretty good high fidelity you want a like noise-free environment to really kind of pull out some of the instrumentation that's going on in those performances it did fine as an AM FM radio. Its weakness is, yeah, as you might expect, is going to be shortwave radio. I also found that to me, if you're a shortwave listener, almost never are you going to be inside a home and using the stock whip antenna. If you are doing this, I highly encourage you to get some kind of an outside antenna, even if it's just like an active loop or even a passive loop. It's going to do better for shortwave particularly if you're inside your home and you just feed it with coax. The problem that this radio has is that the connector for the antenna, which is a good thing that it has a connector, a lot of shortwave radios do not. The problem is, is that all the controls are on the right hand side, which means you've got a whole blank edge here on the left that probably could have been better utilized for inputs and outputs. So things like your power connection, USB-C, and your antenna connection, you know, the little mono 2.3.5 millimeter plug would have been much better suited on that side of the radio. Even your uh, SD card, right, would have been better over there and then have your manual knobs and dials on the right-hand side. I think that would have been a better design decision. It's not a deal breaker in any case, except if you plug in that shortwave antenna and then want to get on that VFO, which a lot of you probably would want to do that. That can be a little bit uh, annoying, but not so much that it's like impossible to do. Also, I encourage you, if you're playing around with shortwave, particularly like the broadcast shortwave stations, utilize the scan and store function on your radio so that you can just scan a frequency set or the entire shortwave bands and then go back through what your radio heard as an appropriately high enough signal to register instead of just trying to like go through it particularly if you're in a high noise environment like i am you're only going to pull out you know 10 stations at best in a lot of cases so you might as well just let it do its memory scan thing and then come back and listen to it after it's done so this is a demo radio that was sent to me from radio oddity to take a look at and um yeah if this scratches some of your itches and ticks some of your boxes then take a look at the choyong lc90 i will have a link in the video description so you can check it out and yes there is a coupon code if you take my link and use the code in the video description at radio oddity and it works on all their products so anyway check it out thanks a lot i'm josh ki6naz 73